Last year, I created my first photography zine, 30 Days in Mexico. It was such a big project for me and it brought me a lot of creative growth. In today's video, I'm going to show you every step that I took to create this zine and the goal is that by the end of this video, you will be able to create yours. The first step is that you have to find the subject of your zine. It can be as simple or as creative as you want it to be. It can be about a trip you took with some friends. It can be about family life. For me, it was about a trip that I took in Mexico last year. It was the first trip where I left my digital camera behind and I decided to shoot all my personal photos on film. And when I came back home and I developed the photos, I fell in love with the results. I was so pleased with the images and I knew I wanted them to be something bigger than just photos I would post on Instagram. I wanted to create a piece of work that would represent my whole experience. The second step is to create the layout of your zine. A little tip here, be very mindful about the photos you choose. It's better in my opinion to put less photos and have a smaller zine um, then put more images that really don't add to the story. For this step, what I did is that I printed all the images on a small sheet of paper on my home printer. I cut them up and I stuck them on my wall. And the goal here is to sequence the images together. You want to create pairs of two images and there is a lot of ways you can go about this. Um, you can pair your images by location, colors or even emotions. What I did is that I chose to pair my images by location first and then I let those images on my wall for a few weeks and I would look at them every few days and I would make some changes and after placing them by location I started placing them by colors. Here are two examples. I decided to put these two images side by side because the flower stand evokes love and romanticism and the couple kissing are representing that. So for me, this was an easy pair. I also placed these by location because they were both taken during the same day in Mexico City. Here, I chose to put these images side by side only because of the color match. They were not taken in the same location, but because of the colors, they fit together and they create a visual story. Have fun with this process until you create the perfect sequence. Then you need to take the layout that you did on your wall and put it up inside a PDF. I know designing a book can be scary and there is a lot of ways to go about it. You can do everything yourself. You can hire a graphic designer. What I did is that I found this website called Blurb that offers an online platform to design books. And I used their platform so that I could create the layout of my book. So I dragged and dropped all the images and I chose their canvases they had for layouts. And at the end, I came up with a layout that I liked. When this was over, I ordered one copy of the book, which I have here. And here it's important to know that the cover was not the final cover I was going to use. This was just something that I that did quickly so that I could see how it could look like. At that point, I knew that I liked the layout, I liked the sequencing, and I was ready to go further with the design of the zine. When designing your own zine, the more you do yourself, the cheaper it's going to be. But obviously, if you work with a graphic designer, you might end up with more unique results. My goal was to make everything myself as much as I could. For this step, I created a Pinterest board where I put all my inspiration for the cover of the zine because I had already created the layout inside, but now I needed to create or hire a graphic designer to make the front and back cover. Also, if you have any photography books at home or any zines at home, look at them, um, touch the paper, see what you like about these zines, and it's gonna help you figure out what you want yours to look like. For me, I had a photo book at home uh, called Black Dots by Nicholas G.R. White, which is absolutely beautiful. I highly suggest uh, you guys look into his work. Um, and I really like the size of this photo book. I like the texture of the paper, I like the quality of it, and I knew that I wanted my zine to look like this as much as possible. At this point, I had a PDF that I got from Blurb with the layout of my zine. I had inspiration from Pinterest, I had this book by Nicholas that I knew was a big inspiration and I decided to work with a graphic designer here in Montreal to design the front and back cover of the zine. If you're interested in working with this graphic designer as well, I'm gonna put all his information in the description. I sent this graphic designer all the information he needed. 
He then sent me a few design options for the front and back cover and I decided the one I liked the most and at this point he sent me the finalized PDF the one that I would be able to send to a printer to finally print the 100 copies of 30 days in Mexico. Step four is to find a printer. Here I highly suggest you guys find a local printer. Um, when going with this option, you'll be able to go meet them in real life, you'll be able to make that connection, you'll be able to touch their papers, and this is highly important. I went on Google and I found about five printers here in Montreal specializing in photography books. I sent them an email asking for a quote. I told them that I wanted to print 100 copies. I told them the size of the zine. I told them that I wanted a cover that would be rigid. I wanted the paper inside to be kinetic and have a mate finish. And with this information, they all sent me the price for 100 books. And so I chose my favorites. I went to meet them in person. I talked to them, I, I touched all the paper and I chose the person I was most comfortable with that gave me the best quality for the price. After this, I sent the printer the PDF and he printed the first proof of the zine. And this step is very important because it's the last step you have to really look at the quality and make sure the zine is up to your standards before printing a hundred of them. Um, don't be afraid to tell that printer if something's wrong. For me, the first proof, which is this one, had um, a pinkish hue on the covers and also in the photos inside. So I told him that and he was very happy to make another proof. Um, their goal is that you are proud of your project, so really don't be afraid to ask for any changes. And my printer did another proof and this was the final result. Um, I was super, super happy with it. The quality of the zine is amazing and I was then ready to print 100 copies. The final step is packaging and shipping. I went on this Canadian website called Uline where you can order a bunch of different shipping materials. I chose bubble mailers because it was a good cheap option and also very safe and waterproof for my zines. I also ordered some shipping labels from Amazon. And what is really cool is that I use Squarespace uh, to sell my zines and Squarespace links with this uh, system called ShipStation and what ShipStation does is that it links up to your favorite um, shipping service. When someone buys your zine off Squarespace, you can pay for shipping directly into ShipStation and it's gonna print the shipping label as well. So it's a very easy process and as I was going to do everything by hand, it was the best option for me because it would have been a nightmare to hand write all the labels. Then at the end of this process, I had a hundred books ready to be shipped and it was amazing because some people from Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, all over Europe, Canada and the US bought uh, the zine and it was an incredible feeling that to know that all these people all around the world were interested in my work. For me, as a photographer, I think creating a photo book or a photo zine is very important as it helps you um, build skills as a curator, it helps you create a body of work, and it's just so magical to see your work physically. So I highly suggest you guys try this. Like I said in the beginning, a zine doesn't need to be that deep. You know, it can be a project that you came up in a month. Um, the goal here is to have fun and experiment. Um, doing a zine can be as cheap as you want it to be or as pricey as you want it to be. Um, it's, it's a big creative process. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope um, this is gonna help you make your own zine. If you have any questions, please um, jump in my DMs. They're always open or comment under this video. I will for sure respond to everyone. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.